Hello and welcome everybody to another webinar within our series of special webinars over the topic of quality and standards in the fight against COVID-19. My name is Dorina Nati and I'm here today with my colleague Raymond Tavares and Mr. Leopoldo Colombo, um, our expert. Before we start with the session today, let me very briefly um, show you our overall webinar series. So we started, we had a, a panel discussion, a virtual panel discussion on standards and testing in the fight against COVID uh, in mid-April. We had another session on organizational resilience in times of COVID. We discussed the role of conformity assessment and um, uh, the last session was on auditing and management system certification in a COVID world and uh, possibly afterwards. And today we're here to discuss um, innovation and innovation standards and how we can harness them um, for a better world after COVID-19. So this is it, the session today. Um, we'll start with a brief introduction by my colleague Raymond Tavares and then with a uh, presentation on the topic by Mr. Leopoldo Colombo, um, followed by a question and answer session. If you have questions and answers, that if you have questions, we have the answers. If you have the questions, then please put them uh, in the Q&A box at the bottom of your Zoom window in writing. We will then pick them up and ask them to um, the expert after his presentation. Um, we want to apologize in advance in case we're not able to um, answer all your questions due to time constraints. We will do our best. For the material, if you don't manage to follow the whole session, we will make available the recordings of this session and previous webinar sessions on the TII Knowledge Hub. Please have a look at tii.unido.org for more information. We will also announce uh, new webinars next week probably and for the weeks after that. Uh, having said that, I don't want to um, take your time. I will hand the floor to my colleague, Mr. Raymond Tavares, who will introduce the topic. Raymond, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Dorina. So uh, you are perfect on introducing, obviously, the webinar series and colleagues and this session. Thank you very much for that. And so um, the topic of today, good morning, good afternoon, and namaste, because I can see from the participants, the audience, uh, people are following us from uh, or India, Argentina, while this morning, and other parts of the world, and obviously Austria. So I would like to tell you that this uh, today's session uh, will tackle the topic of innovation and standards, as you can see in the series of webinars, quality and standards. In these days, where we are all facing this challenge, and we are all forced to adapt our lives and our businesses also uh, to the new circumstances, it is very, very important. Uh, we have been forced to use tools, methodologies or processes which rely extensively to new technologies. So before we are all maybe afraid, threatened by the use of those technologies and mainly the cyberspace, but today the pressure is so high is, is here and obviously we need tomorrow in, ed, in order to survive or to continue doing our business or even our daily life in a no, new normalcy, we need obviously uh, the new technologies and to innovate. Uh, obviously innovation is very important to remain in the market and tomorrow to be successful on what we will be doing. And what happened is uh, ISO recently, I'm talking about recently, but it has started in 2013, uh, has engaged a process, obviously, of developing a series of standards, helping organization enterprises to manage innovation, the innovation process. And the Technical Committee 279 uh, is one of the main platform to table those discussions and to enable the international community to have a standard of practices in order to pro push for innovation. 
Fortunately, we have Mr. Leopoldo Colombo, who is our honored guest today, who has been a convener of the working group number one of the technical committee of the International Standard Organization. Uh, Leopoldo is not only a convener of that committee, because Leopoldo has been himself involved in various other technical committees. Leopoldo has been involved in technical committees since 1997 on the quality management system standards. And Leopoldo is even now engaged also in other technical committees dealing with good governance, with corporate governance. And so he is a well knowledgeable person and expert on what is happening in ISO in terms of standards development. Leopoldo is the founder and the chief executive officer of Quara Consulting and Training Company based in Argentina, but with offices in Peru and in Honduras. Uh, he has a sustainable, strong experience on innovation, on standards, and quality management. Today, we are delighted to have him on board and to discuss about the topic of the day, innovation and standard. Let me recognize and also appreciate the presence of so many people. I see something like in 91, even more than 90, 91 persons attending this audience, this webinar. And so I would like to assure you that we'll do our best to respond to your questions. Since my colleague Dorina mentioned the fact that the session is recorded, we will be able after that, if we will not do it, to respond to your questions later on. More than that, UNIDO is engaged with International Standard Organization on technical cooperation, on promoting innovation and standards. On that note, I would like to give the floor to Leopoldo. Thank you for being available. Thank you for the cooperation you have started and you are still doing with UNIDO. Leo, you have the floor, enjoy. And so I hope you will be as usual on top of the situation. Okay, Raymond, thank you. Thank you very much for your introduction. Actually, you did it better than my mother would have done. So, and, uh, and uh, I'm gonna change the, the screen to, to start with, with, with the presentation. Let me do this and... Uh... Okay, here we are. So good morning and uh, good afternoon, everybody. And uh, again, I would like to thank UNIDO for this uh, opportunity. Uh, they gave me, invited me to join this webinar uh, series uh, because it's, I think it's, it's a good opportunity to, to continue, uh, continue showing the work we have done at ISO with the uh, standardization in the innovation field. So the, the subject today, is to show how we can how we could uh, help organizations uh, to innovate uh, using uh, standards and uh, and what standards we have developed or are in the process of being developed in, uh, with that uh, purpose so we, we we all know where we are in, in a different world these days everybody talk about COVID-19 and uh, for you we look backwards and, and we think our life in 19 uh, in 2019 it was completely different now we understand and we call that life as a, our normal life something that uh, we have lost uh, these days and uh, and uh, now we're in a in a situation like a buffer in an intermediate situation 
where this pandemic is being developed and uh, we don't know if it's going to last six months or 12 to 18 months or maybe more than two years depending on how fast the new drugs show that they are you know they have a good effect uh, uh, in fighting the virus or the vaccine is coming and can be used by everybody in the world we don't know but we know that there is a period running from six months to two years that is going to be very uh, different and, and, and difficult for the organizations because the, the scenario has changed uh, suddenly and uh, if everything goes okay we are going to be back to reality and uh, it's going to be the, the our lifestyle normal again the same way it was normal last year or we are going to face a new normality with the new uh, characteristics during so these days we are facing what we call the low touch economy that uh, we can say in this economy we are practicing social distance as ever before even in those countries like for instance i am in a latin country and we used to be you know very close one to another touching kissing so social distance is, is being hard for us to to practice so don't get close to others limit physical interactions is changing the way we act and interact with our family, relatives, and friends. Hygiene precautions, hand washing, using masks on the streets, that was very unusual here, for instance, in Argentina and other South American countries. Disinfecting everything, when you come from the supermarket, hours trying to wash in and disinfecting everything. Travel restrictions between and within the nations applicable to people, or goods even and limit large gathering no more soccer football no movies theaters events fears nothing so lock down in your house so this is the way we are living and in this way we are affecting many many business and we are affecting how the economy is performing very very deeply and what can expect after the COVID-19? So once we have the, the, the therapy or we have the vaccine, is going to be back to normal or we are going to face a new normality? I think it's going to be like, a, you know, close to the old normal, but not the same. So we are going to, you know, we have greater dependency on technology. We started to work home base, and maybe we, now we know that we can do it, and uh, it will remain in that way for many people. And uh, online learning, training, many of us in the past, we were reluctant to do it. Now we have been forced to do it, and we try it, and we like it. So now, online learning and training will be more important than before the same with the commerce trying to buy everything and anything with the internet now is a habit we we got and maybe we will remain in that way in the, in the future affecting malls street shopping everything we change our purchasing habits and perceived value of what we buy. So we have been months without buying a shirt, a handbag, or I don't know, something we used to buy a lot in the past. And maybe we know, we, we start to, to, to reinvest, re redirect our, our money to buy different things because we perceive that the value we get from the money we pay is different for the different items now changing the way we travel. Maybe we are not going to be so eager to travel in crowded planes, in crowded subways, or in, you know, in crowded trains, even in the, in, in, in the way we, we move around a, a train station, a airport, all that is going to change. 
in the future. It's not going to be back to normal. If you remember after September 11, we get used now to have a lot of screening about safety issues when we got into a plane or even in a train. And now we may have the same, but not security screening, but a health screening in the airport, in the train, they're going to test your temperature or whatever. It's going to be different, I think. And the same with the, the, those events who used to gather a huge crowd of people. More crowded, better the event. So movies, theaters, soccer games, conference, congresses, maybe they would have to rethink their offering to attract people that could remain reluctant to participate in events where so many people are sharing the same space. And also change in the supply chain. Maybe we, we will start focusing more local and less international in looking for suppliers. For instance, now that everybody tried to get PPE, protection personal equipment, we discovered that 40% of international supplies on PPE are coming from three countries, China, Germany, and US. Are we going to be so dependent in the future for some critical supplies? I don't know. Maybe it's going to change and we refocus our strategy regarding suppliers to buy more local and maybe less international. So these changes will happen and, we, uh, and some of them already started to happen. And uh, all this has happened in a very short period of time. Before COVID-19, a company, you know, decided to, you know, to, to move in, in the innovation field and start using innovation tools, do innovation in a more professional way. And one of the issues you always do, you, you, you set up your innovation strategy. And of course, when you design the strategy, everybody, you know, plans something for deploy in the next two or three years. We have that time. So innovation is not new in the business field. So everybody knew before COVID-19 that it has to innovate. So that innovation is the same that quality 30 years ago. We have to innovate, we have to uh, get the competencies to innovate professionally and uh, sustainable. But the issue is that before COVID-19, maybe we have two or three years to deploy our innovation strategy, but now we have months. So whatever we thought could be done in years has to be done in months because the context has changed so dramatically that if we don't change in few months, we may disappear as a business. So organizations are under a significant stress to innovate at a faster speed to remain alive because the, the changes have been so deep and so sudden that we don't have any more years to, to deploy a strategy. We have just a few months to turn our business around. And we are not only thinking in product innovation because before we, we when we talk about innovations in the organization, we mainly focused on uh, you know, how to develop more innovative products or services. But now, maybe we also have to not only do that, uh, adding new you know, uh, characteristics and, uh, and properties to our products or services, but also maybe we have to change the processes we use in the company even they lay out of the organization because people don't want to, you know, work so close to the others. And maybe the business model, because we have to, we start interacting with suppliers locally and international, uh, or we get into a different supply chain and we have to have new business models. So we have to look at innovations in product processes, services and business models at the same time because everything changed at the same time due to COVID-19. 
19. So in that new scenario, all organizations have uh, threats and opportunities. And how well we can take advantage of those opportunities and minimize or you know eliminate the threats will be dependent of our organizational capacities to innovate in that new context and when when i say organizational capacities what i mean i mean in, you know we have to get the capacity to analyze the context the external context and understand trends and drivers and also to know what our internal capabilities are and what access assets we have to innovate processes you know we have to we have to understand that innovation is not happened by accident in organization and it's not because someone you know got a wonderful idea idea while taking a shower. Innovation is the result of a structured process. Interactive, non-linear, but it's a process, a structured, a structured process with defined steps. And we have to have processes to identify opportunities, to create and validate concepts, and to develop and deploy solutions. We, we have to see, to understand the big picture, how innovation happened in the organization and what resources and processes are taken from the organizations to innovate. Leadership. We, we, we need leaders that understand how to innovate and are committed to provide the resources for the uh, processes we need and 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 also have the 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 clarity to uh, be able to commit the organizations on value realization so focus the, the organization in value realization that is critical to innovate culture all organizations exist for a purpose and uh, while doing that purpose, they develop an operational culture. To innovate, you have to focus, uh, your, your mind has to be in, in a different stage. You are not focusing in productivity, profitability, and process efficiency. You are focusing in, some, in creating something new, uh, different, uh, disrupted maybe. So you, you are in a different mindset. And organizations have to learn how to develop this innovation culture and be able to keep that innovation culture alive and coexisting with the operational culture. Also, you have to have an innovation portfolio. So it's not, it's not a question of innovating anything or everything. You have to have a clear focus in your strategy and what project you need to develop for the short term for the medium term and for the long term and project for your actual customer base and also projects to get new customers that you don't actually have you have to develop your innovation portfolio and collaboration external and internal collaboration is critical to allow the companies to access the competencies resources and knowledge they don't have, but they need to develop the innovation projects. And several of these capacities are the Achilles heel for SMEs, especially in emerging economies. SMEs in emerging economies are so focused in, uh, in the operational stuff, in you know being profitable, been uh, producing good quality and efficiently, they're so focused on that, the resources are so scarce that uh, they don't have time to develop, or they didn't have time to develop, to develop these other organizational capacities that now they urgently need. So how 
could we from the, the standardization world to help these organizations to innovate effectively and efficiently? Because when I, when I mentioned standardization and innovation, they sound as a counterintuitive uh, terms. Most people think about standardization like, you know, it's something unflexible, uniformity is all the same for everybody, quality maybe, processes of course, and when, when I say the, the word innovation, they think about, you know, freedom, creative, you know, uh, uniqueness, uh, uncontrollable process, uh, you know, happiness, everybody is happy, colors, you know, I don't know. But those conceptions are wrong. So innovation is is not like you know being happy and, and you know playing with a basketball in in, in your uh, uh, labor space or in your working hours and standardization is not a rigid document that it, it doesn't allow you to do anything so a standard could be as flexible as we want and has and having the degree of freedom that we need to perform they work efficiently. And uh, so I think that from standardization, we, we, we showed that we can provide some help to the organizations. Innovation is the result of a process. It is the result of an activity, okay? So we, we, we perform a set of activities that transforms an input into an output. Uh, the input is the need or the problem that has to be resolved and the output is the innovation. So and we perform a series of activities to provide a solution to the need, and that solution is the innovation. So we, and that is what we usually call a process, a set of interrelated and interlinked activities transforming an input into an output. And we know that if we have a process, the process can be measured because we know we know where the process start and where the process end so we can measure it and we know that if we can measure a process then we can control it and everything that can be controlled and measured can be improved so usually when we say that we are measuring controlling and improving a process we usually say that we are managing that process. Now, in any way you manage the process, are you going to get the right output? The answer is no. There is a, always there is a best way of managing a process to ensure you get the right and the best output. And when you do that, we are saying you are applying best practices. And if we gather the best practices for how we manage these activities that transform a need into an innovation, and we articulate those best practices, then we have a management system. And of course, we can have a standard showing the best practice to manage innovation with a holistic view. This is an innovation management system. So that was understood a few years ago, and some countries started early in this process, like Spain, Brazil, France, UK, developing national standards, providing direction to those organizations who would like to use a tool to manage innovation in a sustainable way. And even in the year 2013, Europe succeeded in publishing a regional technical specification on how innovation should be managed using best practices. That, uh, sort of national and regional standard was good at the beginning because give us different approaches from different perspectives 
perspective, sorry, how innovation has to be managed. But at the end, we you try to collaborate and do projects together, started to be you know, a negative aspect because not everybody was seeing the process from the same angle or we are not calling the same with the same word. So at that time was when ISO gets on board. And in the year 2013, ISO set up the Technical Committee 279 and now, today, after you know seven years, have 59 countries, like P members and O members, and a lot of you know liaison members like UNIDO, uh, WTO, World Bank, ISPIN, etc. And uh, the purpose of this TC is to draft standards in the field of innovation management. And we have a, a, a structure like this with with a, with a Secretariat from that is held by France and uh, four working groups for innovation management system, terminology, tools and methods, and assessment. And what are we doing in that field? Well, we we developed this standard ISO 56002 innovation management system, providing guidance on how to manage innovation using international best practices. This standard was already published in July 2019. Working Group 2 developed the ISO 56000, where you can find fundamentals and vocabulary, vocabulary regarding innovation management. Working Group 3, that already published 56003, that talks about collaboration, you know, how, how to do partnerships. For, to innovate, uh, participate in, in, in innovation project. And he's working in four more additional standards. 05, addressing intellectual property. 06, addressing strategic intelligence. 07 is talking about idea management. And 08, tools and methods for innovation operation measurements, key process indicators. And with working group four that developed and published the innovation management assessment technical report with ISO 56004. So there is a family of standards that has been published or others that have been developed to help SMEs mainly in uh, approaching innovation on a professional way. Before drafting the, the innovation management system standard, we decided at first, what are gonna be the principles, the foundation of this standard? And we de define eight main principles that the innovation management system standard should have as the foundation uh, to, from there, develop the guidelines or requirements. One of them is realization of value. It's one of the principles and uh, the second one is leaders focus on the future. The third one is a strategic direction. Four one, culture. The fifth one, purposeful ideation, managing uncertainty, adaptability, and a systemic approach to innovations. Those are the eight main principles that an organization should have to ensure that the innovation will be managed in a professional and sustainable way. Then every single principle has been written following this model. The, the name of the principle, realization of value, for instance, and a statement supporting the principle, a rational key benefits you get when you deploy this principle in your organization and actions that you can take to deploy this principle in your organization. So the eight management innovation management principle has been written following this pattern 
and they are already available in the standard ISO 56000. And what is the innovation management system? What are the elements that make up an innovation management system? I would like to introduce them very quickly, not to take too much time from you, but this is how a system looks like, a management innovation management system looks like. You know, the, the main core process is this one, where is when we take the, the intent, the opportunity, the need, a true identifying opportunities, create the concepts, validate the concepts, develop the solution and deploy the solution, we get the output of it, meaning the innovation of, or value of this process. This is performed inside the company, you know, with, with, a, and with a known context, internal and external, under a leadership committed to innovation and supported by different processes, providing resources, competences, etc. And of course, of any other management system standard for ISO, we have the Plan Do Check Act uh, uh, cycle embedded in the structure of the standard. We have an introduction just, you know, to provide some input when you start reading the standard about what the innovation management principles are, what the system is, and the relation <clears throat> between this standard and other management systems like quality, environment, etc. These are, you know, formatted uh, uh, clauses, the scope, normative references, terms and definitions. And in, in, in point four is where the guidance the guidelines start. It's a, you know, we have to understand the context the organization is in, what are the needs and expectations of the interested party regarding innovation, what is going to be the scope of our innovation management system, and how we deploy, how we establish the innovation management system. And in this particular point, I would like to highlight two subclasses, culture and collaboration. Remember, culture, you know, having an innovation culture coexisting in a very friendly way with your operational culture is key to succeed in your innovation initiatives. So both cultures are needed. The company has to exist to deliver the actual products effectively and efficiently, and also have to be able to develop the new products for your years to come. Both things are critical for organization and you have to be able to develop both cultures that can coexist in a friendly way. And collaboration. Collaboration is the key to open the door to disruption. And the organization has to learn how to collaborate with your ecosystem and be able to get the resources, the knowledge and the competency you need, but you don't have through collaboration. So, and this is critical. And even again, in the small and medium enterprises, this capacity is not so easy to get because there are no use to interact with the ecosystem in, in this field. So it's a lot to learn and has to be done in this aspect. Then of course we have a clause dedicated to leaders to develop the strategy, the vision, the innovation vision, the innovation strategy, the innovation policy. And also be responsible to focus the organization in value realization. We have another point regarding planning, you know, how to address your, all the opportunities and risk that you, you know, identify when you did your context analysis, how to set up innovation objectives and how you plan to achieve them, what kind of structure you need to perform your innovation project. The same structure you have for your operational processes or you need to have a different structure. And also what is your innovation project portfolio? We already talked about that. And remember that you need to have innovation projects for your core processes and products that are, you know, focused 
focus on your present customers, but you also you have to have those projects for your products that you don't have today for customers that you don't have today. So you have to address both of them and you have to have a balanced portfolio of innovation projects. Then we talk about the supporting process you, you need, you know, competencies to innovate. What competencies you need to ensure that people participating in the innovation teams can do that in a profitable way. How are you going to manage communication, especially when you, you perform, you know, innovation process in collaboration with external parties, how, you know, it's going to be managed on the communication issues, how you, you manage your documents, tools and methods that you have to apply for the different activities, how are you going to manage strategic intelligence and how are you going to manage intellectual property if needed? You have to define the stuff. And when we talk about resources, we are talking about people, time, knowledge, finance, and infrastructure. Remember, if you don't dedicate time to innovate, the organization will not innovate. The same with resources, financial resources, and having people dedicated to innovation activities. So innovation will not happen by accident in the organization. You have to dedicate people, time, knowledge, finance resources, and, uh, and the needed infrastructure to ensure that your innovation projects can be deployed. And then we can, we go to the operation itself. We have a, we have a gather all the activities in five main phases. First of them, identifying the opportunity or the need or the problem. Then you go to the creating concepts phase, where you try to generate ideas and conceptualize your ideas to, to resolve this opportunity or problem, validate concepts, develop solutions, and deploy solutions. And remember, the idea generation is a process, okay? The idea is not just you know, having a brainstorming and that's it. You have five de defined steps when you talk about ideas, identification, of the opportunity, idea generation here, quantity is more important than quality, idea selection here, quality is more important than quantity, idea conceptualizations and results. <coughs> Sorry, and remember, investing in front end activities that mean idea generation is when you can get the most at the less cost. Further you go, you progress in the process, more, more costly is to have a change in the project. And then we have obviously how to measure all your activities and how to improve your system. So to conclude, what we have done from the ISO uh, point of view to, to help organizations, we have developed a family standard. The core one, the central one is 56 section and two, where you have this, the, the guidelines to set up an innovation management system. And then we have developed two other standards already published, tools and methods for co collaboration and 04 innovation management assessment. And we are developing four other standards to you know, go more in deep in some elements you need to deploy an innovation management system, meaning idea management, intellectual property, strategic intelligence, and key process indicators. So this is the family of standards that we are developing. So they were not developed because of COVID-19. We talk about this long before COVID-19 appears in the world, but now I mean, if with this scenario that have changed so dramatically, so quickly, these standards are getting more and more value because are a very useful tool for organizations of all kinds to start to innovate in a, in a sustainable and professional way. So I, I think I, 
I took four more minutes than expected. Sorry about that. Uh, if, there, if there is any question or answer, I'm more than willing to uh, answer them. So thank you very, very much, uh, Leopoldo, for this uh, very informative presentation. I was excited uh, to follow again your presentation on, on the ISO family of uh, standards for innovation measurement system standards. We have uh, some questions uh, from the audience. We have passed 100. And the first one is about, obviously, one of the C's you mentioned, because I think I remember you mentioned the three C's, you know, the fact that the culture is very important. You mentioned also the cooperation is very important, collaboration, you call it. I think also you mentioned the capacity, the organizational capacity of uh, yeah, enterprise resource institutions. The C of culture was questioned. And the question is really telling you, I mean, the participant is saying is key. And so he would like to know, uh, like here in the question, which role obviously the leadership could play to secure this innovation culture? This is one question. The second question is more about you explaining what strategic intelligence of the working group number three uh, means. And we have another question. If you want the third question, so in that case, you can try to respond very quickly to that and we will gather the question if we got them. Is how is the standard, the 56002, differ from investors in people? If you happen to know that. So, thank you very much. The floor is yours again, Leopoldo. If you don't understand, I can again maybe also. Uh, tell you the questions, otherwise the floor is yours. Yeah, uh, thank you very much, uh, Raymond. Uh, regarding uh, the first one, the role the leaders uh, shall take in, in deploying an innovation culture, well, is their responsibility. The culture in our organization is the responsibility of the leaders. So uh, they, 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 they have, for that reason, to set up an innovation culture, we need leaders focusing the future. They, they should have a clear understanding of the future they are going to face and what they, do, they need to do to have the, the products the company will need for that future, for that user needs that you will have for, for, your, for your future customer base. And uh, they, they have to understand that to innovate, people have to be in a different mindset than to work in an operational process. And so you have to develop that particular culture that have, you know, particular characteristics. Some of them are hard ones, like resources, processes, and success, and other ones are the soft ones, the values, the behavior, the climate in the organization. So they are the ones that have to develop these uh, aspects of the culture to ensure that the, that the people can innovate efficiently in the same way that they do the operational process in the organization. And uh, maybe the first way they can start is just, you know, measuring where are you regarding innovation culture in your organization and try to get some clues where are your weak points in your innovation culture in the organization and try to start working on it with some uh, specific actions. Uh, the second one was uh, strategic intelligence, uh, I think, uh, uh, is about what is, is the purpose of the, of the standard, is I, I understood, is that one? And I mean, yeah, uh, it is. You, you mentioned directly, Leo, uh, the fact that this working group number three, you mentioned the strategic intelligence is just about what it is, the meaning. Because I know also we have one of the standards uh, dealing with the 
the, 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 the matrix of innovation. It is also to reinvent or to add on the means we have to measure innovation today based on research and development uh, expenses, uh, other means and other instruments for the metrics. Now this working group number three, uh, you just mentioned the strategic intelligence. It's the meaning, what it means. It, 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 at the beginning, the, the first standards addressing that issue, Spain was very active in, in, that, in that field. They, they, uh, they set up a standard regarding, they call technology surveillance, you know, that you have to have the capability to understand what, what, are, what are the technologies outside there uh, to, and uh, how, because if you're going to innovate and you're going to use a determined technology, you have to be sure that you're selecting the right one, okay? That you are not, you know, committing your, uh, uh, link, linking your, your, pro, your future to a technology that doesn't have too much future because it's going to be replaced or something new is coming, completely different. So you have to survey what's going on with technology. And it's not, at the beginning was about that, technology surveillance. Then it's not only to gather the information, it's also to put that information on value. So to get value out of that information and that is, is strategic intelligence. So that is, it's not my, my, my field of expertise, but that is the purpose of the, the standard is to provide guidelines of, about how you have to manage that in your organization. And the third question was what, Raymond? Okay, the third question was a question regarding these investors in people. How is the standards? I mean, the one you present today, the 5602, is different from investors in people. I'm not familiar with that one. I want to just uh, to understand if this investor in people is something uh, you are familiar and you know about. Otherwise, I think, yes. Please. I only know that it, I think it's I well understood. It's something. It's a, it's a, it's a standard. Or, or, or yes, uh, coming from the UK, and uh, is is more focusing in human resources issues than the, uh, other things. But uh, I'm not very familiar with the content of that uh, standard to be sure that I can answer that question because I, I'm not familiar with the content itself. Excellent. Uh, but I think obviously we can mention that here it's a holistic approach, like you mentioned, it's going beyond only the people. And you mentioned cooperation, you mentioned capacity of the organization and other things. So it's the, the international standard of organization, obviously try to be more holistic and broader. Uh, you had now other series of questions, of questions. And you have one of my colleagues and uh, here would like to know, uh, since you mentioned uh, that in this particular challenging time, we need to speed up the innovation process. And so that is why this uh, standard, which was prepared before to help the capacity of organization and how it will be affected, the, this process could be affected again uh, with this pandemic emergency? This is the question. I don't know if you got it. So the, the question is obviously here, like very clearly, please clarify the impact of the COVID-19 on the innovation process as based on your explain, we need faster. Well, yeah, the impact is, I would say, is in the organization that, uh, because uh, from my point of view, as I said before, in, 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 in those normal times that we lost last year, the, the time frame to deploy all this uh, in the organization was bigger than today. Today we have to introduce and to get these capacities in the organization at a faster speed, a faster rate. We don't have so much time to get the, the knowledge we need to, to get these capacities in the organization. And that is the challenge. So how we can do all this in such short period of time. 
So, and I need that, I think that here we have a clear understanding from the leaders of the organization that if they, before, they, they thought that they could do this in one or two years, now they have to commit the resources and, and, uh, uh, to ensure that you can get this in just a few months and be able to change around your business in a few months acquiring these capacities. So otherwise, you won't be able to innovate in a sustainable way. You have to get these capacities in your organization in a shorter period of time. So you need commitment from your leadership and resources. So maybe here is what where collaboration takes more importance because it's going to be difficult to get all these by your own resources in-house. So interacting with your ecosystem to ensure that maybe you can get what you don't have outside. And it's better to do that and faster to do that than doing that by yourself. So go to 50, 56,003 and you get guidelines how to you know, engage in collaborative projects effectively. So I mean, maybe you know, stressing the collaboration aspect in your innovation projects is key in these days to ensure that you can do this in, in, in a short period of time without having all capacities in-house. Yeah, fair enough, uh, Leopoldo. And I think also there is a question now, we are uh, almost one minute towards the end. I think uh, we may have maybe five more minutes to, to finish if you allow me to do that, because there is a question regarding obviously uh, many other questions, but I'm selecting one, uh, which is just asking you about uh, the target. You mentioned in your presentation, SMEs, but many are questioning, is it really something we can use for SMEs or it was designed, shape for large or maybe medium-sized companies? What can you say about that? Yeah, that's also a good question, Raymond. I would say that when we develop the standard, we put a special attention in the needs of SMEs, who are the kind of company that need the most this kind of standards. So, uh, of course, this standard is, is fully applicable. They are fully applicable to SMEs. SMEs are the main focus or the main users of, of these standards and can be used uh, uh, easily, can be taken easily by them. Remember that all these standards are guidelines. So you can take those guidance that you need and disregard the others. So I would say the best thing for an SME is to start is to do a capacity assessment, to assess what your capacities are, and once you have identified the gap, you take those capacities to where you are performing at a low level, take one of these standards that are addressing that particular capacity and start working on it. So that would be my advice. But of course, these standards, all of them can be applied for any kind of industry, mainly SMEs. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Leo. I, I understand that you are just saying it is a kind of uh, whole package, but you have some sections, some aspects uh, which could uh, be applied more to some realities than others and would be more on need of need for certain categories of enterprises. And so it's up to the institutions, the organization, so to take them. Uh, so thank you very much. You have questions regarding cyber security, but I think it is not the right place. And since this uh, uh, seminar series and webinar series will continue, we'll be able to uh, also uh, tackle those aspects, those topics regarding cyber security and uh, data protection. Obviously, uh, in order to wrap up, uh, Leo, thank you very much because you mentioned uh, 
a very, very important thing that here, uh, even the notion of low touch economy that you mentioned yourself is just showing us that we need to speed up, to speed up. And to speed up, we need the capacity of the organization to be strengthened and these standards can do it. And so uh, I, I wanted to mention the fact that these standards you just mentioned and uh, will enable in the future uh, organization to find even the response uh, to innovate in their own business model, to change their own business model. And so standards for rapid and secure results you can obtain, you mentioned, for safety and for sustainability, for inclusiveness and for shared responsibility. So on that note, I would like obviously uh, to mention again UNIDO jointly with the International Standard, of, Standard Organization is uh, working uh, on promoting the standards, but other tools helping SMEs in emerging countries, in developing countries to innovate, to be responsive. So tomorrow, so they will have also the capacity to be resilient to such crises and to really be competitive. So in this note, I wanted to thank you and to tell you again that this webinar was recorded. You could find it in the, in the internet later on. Some of the questions we are getting even now, we will try to answer to those questions later on. And we would like uh, to keep in touch with you. Uh, we hope that we have been helpful, meaningful, the session. And so we could continue our cooperation in different other forms, technical cooperation through projects, global fora together, also organizing other joint advisory activities together. Uh, I would like to thank obviously my colleague who have been supporting this. I mean, all uh, Nicolas and Dorina, you are not seeing them, but without them, this session would have not been possible. So thank you very, very much. And uh, we hope you enjoy this session with us. Leo, thank you very much. Bye-bye. Very welcome, Raymond. Thank you. Bye-bye.